Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. Today we're talking about SVGs or Scalable Vector Graphics after briefly touching on them in last week's video on HD Web Design. SVG is another graphic file format that pretty much sits alongside GIFs, JPEGs and PNGs. The key difference is that these more traditional image file types are all pixel based raster files while SVGs are mathematical vector files that do not lose their quality when you zoom in or resize. SVGs aren't new. They've been around as a W3C recommendation for over 10 years. Back then, they were probably seen as a bit of a poor man's flash, but with flash usage and support continuing to decline, SVGs are beginning to make a comeback for logos, icons and CSS sprites. And it's not hard to see why. If you can buy retina displays with responsive web design, the use of low file size scalable vector graphics sounds like a pretty good idea. So Apple, for example, don't just try to be on the uh, cutting pioneering edge with their products. Their, uh, their own website's actually uh, also uh, at the forefront of design and also development in the industry. And they're currently going through a process of utilizing SVGs on their website. If you to check out the navigation bar on the store, for example, on the UK store, you'll see that the navigation is very sort of fuzzy when you're zoomed in as close as I am. This is simply because it's made up of uh, raster graphics like PNGs. If however you were to navigate to the home page and look at the navigation bar that's different on the home page, you'll see that the logo and the text is far crisper than it is on the store. That's because the home page navigation uses SVGs, or scalable vector graphics, for the Apple icon and the text that's on the navigation. They just obviously haven't got round yet to uh, rolling the same navigation out onto the store. You can also see SVGs used elsewhere on the Apple website. Uh, if I try and zoom in as close as possible on this uh, video thumbnail, you'll see that the uh, play button is very crisp, and that again, that's because it's an SVG graphic. So in my opinion, um, Apple are obviously uh, in the process of using SVGs a lot more in their design, and that's so that their uh, own website looks as uh, superb as possible on their retina displays, whether it's the uh, iPhone 4 that's been around for two years, the iPad 3, or the recently launched retina display on the MacBook Pro. And like we mentioned last week, um, you know the retina display is more than likely going to make its way onto the iMac and other uh, computer brands may also follow suit with creating high resolution displays. It makes sense, but if you're new to SVGs, there are a few hurdles and considerations to take into account first. Let's quickly whip up an SVG logo so that we can compare it to a PNG. To create your SVG files, you can use Adobe Illustrator, or there's a free alternative called Inkscape that uh, can create SVG files uh, just as well. So I'm going to create a, an SVG file for the CREA logo. And I've just opened the uh, vector file up in uh, Illustrator already. So to start off with, I'm going to make a new file for the SVG. And I'm not going to set the size of this to be any bigger than the largest size that I'm going to use it on the web page. Obviously, because it's going to be saved as a vector graphic, it doesn't really make too much difference what size um, I actually create the canvas at. Okay, and I'm just going to set the preview mode to pixel and align new objects to pixel grid. Just help me position the graphic in place. Let's perhaps call it Crea logo and push OK. So this gives us a uh, new canvas size with the pixel grid laid over the top. I'm going to select the uh, Crea group logo and paste this onto my new canvas. I'm just going to zoom out slightly. Resize this in. Now, if you're creating a canvas with a small file size like I am, it may appear that the picture is going to be saved um, pixelated, but rest assured it won't. It's going to uh, save as a vector file once we save it in a moment. So just uh, pop your picture into the canvas. Okay, 
And once you're happy with it, you're ready to save. So much like in Photoshop, you can go to File, Save for Web and Devices. And this brings up the familiar view for saving a graphic for the web. Now much like in Photoshop, you've got GIF, JPEG, PNG, but you'll also notice in Illustrator there's the ability to save the file as an SVG. So save it as an SVG 1.1. As you put the uh, decimals up to three, this is the quality of the vector, and make sure that it's saved as an SVG file. Hit save, and then just save that away to your desktop or wherever you want to store your web files. Then you're ready to embed your graphic onto your web page. So the traditional ways of embedding an SVG file is through the uh, object tag, or more recently the uh, embed tag is taking sort of more um, priority over that. Uh, you can also embed it in an iframe, but um, you know to utilize SVGs for things like uh, sprites and vector logos, you're probably going to be using the SVG as a background in CSS, or even just putting it straight in as an image tag. So for the image tag, even the background uh, picture, there's not really any difference other than making sure that you link up the correct, the correct file name as SVG rather than uh, GIF, JPEG, or PNG that you may have used in the past. So now that we've got our SVG logo, let's compare it to a PNG alternative. Now that we've got our SVG logo, let's compare it with a PNG counterpart that's been saved to the same size as a PNG24. First of all, a key consideration is file size. Now there's no right or wrong answer here, much like with GIFs, PNGs and JPEGs, the output file size will vary dependent on the size and complexity of the graphic. The same goes for SVGs. The Create logo is fairly simple, and as you can see, on comparison, the SVG is only 30% larger in file size, which in the grand scheme of things isn't really much at all. In some instances, the SVG will be smaller than the PNG and vice versa. With the Apple Navigation sprite we looked at earlier, for example, the SVG is 55 kilobytes, whilst the PNG is less than 20% of that value at 10 kilobytes. The real issue, however, is browser compatibility. Whilst SVGs are compatible with most smartphone browsers, Safari, Chrome and Firefox, they simply do not work on IE6, 7 or even 8. If you want to cater for your IE8 and below users, you're going to have to prepare raster versions of your SVGs and create CSS fallbacks that source these alternate files, so potentially a lot more extra work. But there are of course the positives, mainly resolution. Having a graphic that's native to any resolution means that you can use the graphic multiple times at different sizes without any scaling issues. If you zoom in or have a retina display, you'll have a sharp graphic that looks fantastic alongside your real text and CSS3 architecture. So in conclusion, the only real advantage of an SVG file is the resolution and how vector graphics are better for responsive layouts and those lucky enough to have a screen resolution that exceeds 72 dpi. Browser support and performance will only get better over time. So if you're on a quest to have a design that's as raster pixel free as possible, it's definitely worth experimenting with SVGs. And one final piece of advice, if your SVGs aren't displaying on your live server when embedded with the image tag or a CSS background, check out our supporting blog post for help. Thanks for watching.